right. There are actual efforts to suppress the testimony of eyewitnesses to the Benghazi horror. But the Obama administration says it doesn't know anything about it. There are people in your own State Department saying they've been blocked from com coming forward, that they survived the terror attack and they want to tell their story. <laughs> Will you help them come forward and just say it once and for all? Ed, Ed I'm not familiar with this notion that uh, anybody's been blocked from testifying. So uh, what I'll do is I will find out uh, what exactly you're referring to. Uh, what I've been very clear about from the start is that uh, our job with respect to Benghazi has been to find out exactly what happened, to make sure that U.S. embassies, not just in uh, the Middle East but around the world, are safe and secure. Uh, and to bring those who carried it out to justice. Uh, but I'll find out uh, what exactly you're referring to. They hired an attorney because they're saying that they've been blocked from coming, uh, coming forward. I'm not familiar with it. We're not aware of any employees who have requested security clearance for private attorneys in connection with Benghazi. We're not aware of it. But a lawyer for the State Department workers saying the administration is threatening to punish whistleblowers. I am talking specifically about Benghazi, that people have been threatened, and not just the State Department. The people have been threatened at the CIA. It's frightening, and, and they're doing some very despicable um, threats to people. Not, we're going to kill you, or not, we're going to prosecute you tomorrow, but they're, they're taking career people and making them well aware that their careers will be over. Congressman Trey Gowdy joins us. Nice to see you, Congressman. Good to see you. How are you? I'm very well, and I understand late breaking today the news that uh, on May 8th there will be hearings before Chairman Issa's committee. I assume uh, it will be calling these whistleblowers to testify. Uh, well, I'm not going to. I'm not at liberty to disclose the identity of the witnesses. I will just say what I have said previously, which is it is going to be a, a very informational, instructive hearing. I would encourage you to follow it. And Benghazi is uh, warming up. It is not going away, despite the efforts of this administration. What makes it informational? I'll try going around that way. Well, uh, Greta, you were a very accomplished attorney, and I think you know that uh, hearsay evidence not not so interesting. Firsthand accounts by eyewitnesses much more compelling, much more persuasive. So I would again repeat uh, for your audience and those who may be watching, if you also have firsthand knowledge about what happened in Benghazi, uh, Secure Council, see Chairman Issa, get counsel, we'll have it appointed, you will be protected. Um, so l let me just say that next week uh, will be a wonderful opportunity for us to hear non-hearsay accounts of what happened in Benghazi. I guess that leads then to my second question. Now, now, now we know that it's going to be people with firsthand account of Benghazi, so I assume that they were on the ground in Benghazi. I will make that assumption. I don't know if you have not confirmed it or not, but I'll make that assumption. But the State Department has said that they have already, uh, they've already investigated the Accountability Review Board, which was an outsourced uh, group of people by the State Department, that they fully have investigated it. Are you saying that you, that, that you are not accepting their investigation and that you yourself want to talk to the uh, witnesses? Oh, that, that's an understatement. To say that we haven't accepted it, uh, Greta, how in the world can you have a comp comprehensive review of Benghazi when you don't even bother to talk to the Secretary of State? She wasn't even interviewed by the so-called Accountability Review Board. There's a reason that students don't grade their own papers. There's a reason defendants don't sentence themselves. And there's a reason the State Department doesn't get to investigate itself determine whether or not it made errors in Benghazi. That is Congress's job. And so, yes, it would be a, 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 a wild understatement for us to say we do not have confidence in the Accountability Review Board and its conclusions. All right, one thing you and I have talked to off camera um, on many occasions that we talk about the courtroom and how different it is, is that you get to ask questions until you get the answer. I mean, you get a lot, in, in Congress, you have like four minutes or five minutes, so nothing ever gets fully developed. Have you considered sort of like, you know, joining forces with some of your colleagues and, and someone taking all the, all the time so that the questions really can be asked rather than the sort of, you, know, you do three minutes, the next person does three minutes, and we never hear what happened? 
Uh, we have had those conversations before. Of course, when you're dealing with members of Congress, uh, each one of them individually wants all the time. So uh, I, I am fortunate to serve on oversight with, with folks like Jimmy Jordan and Jason Chaffetz, who are very strong uh, on a host of issues, uh, but don't have courtroom experience. And I think you are going to see a very well prepared side of the dais uh, for the Republicans on the hearing next week. Uh, I, I've been preparing all weekend for it, and as you say, I only get five minutes. Uh, I've been approached by colleagues who would like to yield their time to me. Of course, the frustration is you get five minutes and then you go to the other side, so whatever points you were making, you have to start all over again. Uh, Chairman Issa has certain tools at his disposal, which he doesn't use very often, but they are tools nonetheless for us to have more continuity. This is such an important hearing that I expect uh, and hope that Chairman Issa will use every arrow in his quiver to make sure that the audience doesn't have this continual interruption of five minutes here and then five minutes changing the topic. And I know firsthand, because there has been coordination among the members on the Republican side, how we can present this case as seamlessly as possible come next week. All right. Um, you may have heard the sound by my colleague uh, Ed Henry asking the president today at the, sound, at the press conference about whether or not he was familiar with any uh, any evidence or suggestion of intimidation of the whistleblowers. The president said, and I'm uh, paraphrasing, I don't know exactly what he said, but that he was unaware of anyone trying to block the whistleblowers from testifying. Um, do you have any information that is contrary um, to that? Do you have any reason to doubt the president was unfamiliar or didn't know about it? Well, I can't speak to what the president knows or doesn't know. I know this, Greta. We have time in life to do the things that we think are important. The president now has known for 12 hours that there was an allegation that whistleblowers are being, uh, are, 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 are being uh, thwarted or being silent. So what's he done in the last 12 hours? Did he call the State Department? Did he call the CIA? Did he say, I want attorneys appointed for anyone who works for your department who wants to come forward? I know he made a phone call yesterday to a basketball player? Did he make a phone call to the whistleblowers who are trying to expose the murder of four fellow Americans? Did he call them today and say, you know what, I want to congratulate you for coming forward. You're doing the right thing. He's had 12 hours. I don't know what he knew before this morning. I know this. He knows now, and he's known since this morning. So what's he done in the last 12 hours? If you've got time to go to the White House Correspondents Dinner and you've got time to speak to Planned Parenthood, he said he wasn't going to rest until the, uh, those who were responsible for Benghazi were brought to justice. Who's been brought to justice? Who? Well, I it's been seven months. Let me just defend him for going to the uh, White House Correspondents Dinner. It's a charity, and we in the m media invite the president every year, and uh, we're always glad when the president show up and grace. Uh, let me do at least you know thank him for that. Although I wasn't at the dinner this year. All right, let me ask you one other question. What provoked all the whistleblowers? Although you've not confirmed that it's the whistleblowers that are coming forward. What what provoked all your witnesses to suddenly come forward? Did they all get together, or somebody gone out to them? What what was the catalyst? I, I think it's a a a growing frustration. Uh, you want to let government do its job. When, when, when people say we're investigating it, we're going to get to the bottom of it, we're going to get you answers, you want to believe them. But after seven months, it becomes patently obvious th that, that the, the sole function of the Accountability Review Board was to insulate Hillary Clinton. So at some point, uh, again, speaking generically, I think you, just in the quietness of your own soul, you realize uh, government is not getting us answers on Benghazi, and I have to show the courage, uh, a, a, the moral courage, if you will, to come forward even if there are going to be rep reprisals and consequences against me, and more power to them for doing so. There are folks whose careers are in jeopardy. There are folks who are understandably uh, fearful of retribution, and, and, and we ought to be encouraging and incenting them to come forward we ought to be providing counsel and access to classified information and not threats. And I think what we're going to find out next week is that this effort to delay and obfuscate and, and, and hide has been going on since shortly after Benghazi. This is not a new phenomenon. There has Congress been an orchestrated attempt. Yes, ma'am. Congressman, thank you, sir. I thank you very much, and I hope you'll come back next week uh, as the hearings unfold. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
So now to tonight's hot button issue on GretaWire.com. Should the State Department's Accountability Review Board report be enough to satisfy Congress, or should Congress do its own investigation of Benghazi? Go to GretaWire.com and vote in our poll. Now